I'm going to send you out to a people. They're not going to understand. They're going to see it, but they're not going to believe it. In other words, Isaiah, they're not going to listen to you because they're deaf, dumb, and blind. And the only way that they can be saved is for their eyes to be opened. So Isaiah, you go and spread the message. You tell the people they're not going to listen to you, but you keep telling, you keep telling, you keep telling, you keep telling. I heard an illustration one time about this little old man in Sydney, Australia. And Every time somebody would walk by, he'd walk up to him and he said, pardon me, sir, do you, um, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? He said, you know, the Bible says there's only two places, heaven or hell. Toodaloo, have a good day. And he kept doing that for years. Got old. And one day a great preacher was preaching somewhere in Adelaide and he, he gave that illustration of the man in the street and somebody popped up in the back of the room and he said, he said sir I, I just want you to know that I'm here today I'm saved because a little old man in Sydney Australia came up to me one day and asked me if I knew where I was going to spend eternity, heaven or hell. And all over the world, this man went. Everywhere he spoke, it was people who spoke up and said, because of that little old man, Sydney, Australia, I'm saved today. And finally, this preacher went to Sydney, Australia and looked up this man and said, oh yeah, we know he's, he's quite old now and can't get out anymore, but yeah, we know who you're talking about. So he went to the man's house and he, um, he went in and he started talking to the man and he told him about all the people around the world who had come to know Jesus Christ as their personal savior because of this little man asking them that question. And the little man began to cry. And he said, you know, in all the days that I was doing that, on the streets of Sydney, Australia. I never knew that anything of what I said made any difference in anybody's life. And sometimes we don't know. We don't know what a difference we're making in somebody's life. A word here, a word there, an arm around a shoulder here, a caring act there. God has just called us to be him to the world. And he'll take care of the rest. We should never forget the one who sanctified them. And sanctified again is simply that they have been made holy. They have been set apart for the glory of God. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, he says, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. And that's what should happen to all of us, is that when we come to know Jesus Christ, when we truly come to know Jesus Christ, the, the world means nothing anymore. Sure, we're going to live in it, and we're going to accumulate stuff, and we're going to do all the things that the world has to, has to offer to it, but the world means nothing to us anymore because we belong to Jesus Christ. And all we want to do is just to, to help people to understand, sir, do you know where you're going to go when you die? The Bible says, heaven or hell. Toodaloo, have a good day. Are you willing to do at least that much to help people to find their way to Christ? We live in a battlefield. Satan is out to destroy our lives. This is a battlefield. That's why Paul said in, in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20, 
to put on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the belt around our waist to tie it all together. We are to be equipped every day to carry the word into battle because it is a battle. And Jesus has also called us to a mission field to tell people about Jesus. The scripture verses we've been learning out of Romans is, is basically the plan of salvation, the Roman road to salvation. But at the end of that, those verses, it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. It's a mission for you, whether it's your next door neighbor or whether God has touched your life and sent you to the uttermost parts of the world. God has called us to be prepared for the battle. God has called us to be on mission to share the gospel with those that we meet. Do you know the reason that Jesus was so upset with five of the seven churches in the Revelation? It's because they had, they had stopped fighting. They had stopped sharing. They had stopped being the church that God intended for them to be. The church at Laodicea, the last one, in chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Behold, Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into them and dine with them and they with me. Jesus desires to come in. Jesus desires to be in the forefront of his church. Jesus desires that every time we come together that our sole purpose for coming here is not necessarily to see each other, which is a part of it, but our sole purpose for coming here is to learn from the word of God and to worship God, to worship Jesus, to allow him to touch our hearts afresh and anew to be the kind of people that he has called us to be. That's what Jesus was praying for in the John chapter 17. Father, knit them together as one and help them to be what you intended for them to be when you gave them to me so many years ago. Jesus is one with the Father. And Jesus is asking that his disciples, you and us, be one with him. Thank you, Father, that you have given us your word, that in your word there is strength. In your word, Lord, there is knowledge. In your word, O oh God, there is understanding. In your word, O oh God, there is power for the spreading of your word throughout the world in which we live and through our gifts and our prayers and even through our going that we are able to touch the lives of those that we encounter with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Lord, if there's anything of importance that we do on this earth, that's good. And some people even have monuments put up for them because of the good that they've done some people are remembered long after their death for the good that they have done. But Lord, I pray that as your people, that our primary goal in life is to be remembered because we put our trust in you and that we walk with you. And Lord, even if we don't have any earthly monuments put up to us, we pray, dear God, that when we get to heaven, that there will be many people there who will be monuments and testaments of the fact that we were faithful to share your love. 
If there's any decisions that need to be made here this morning, Lord, I pray that I pray that you will lead them. That you will lead them according to your will and your purpose. If it's for salvation, Lord, oh dear God, we are grateful for that one who made a profession of faith at youth camp this week. Maybe there's others here today, Lord, who just need to put their trust in you. To know that you care and that you desire that all people come to know you in a personal way. We praise you, we glorify you, and we exalt you. And may in all that we do, Lord, may we give you glory. In Christ's name, amen. Let's stand together. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will be converted unto you. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, for the wages of our sin is spiritual death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That if we shall confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God have raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever puts their faith in him shall not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Daniel is going to come and give you a report on the pastor search process, so you be seated. Be very brief. Is this on? Okay, guys, go talk a little bit louder. So, just a just a quick update. The uh, the pastor discovery team. We have continued to meet on uh, Sunday afternoons, and we'll continue this process. The um, we have been receiving resumes. Uh, we've we've reviewed quite a few of those. As a matter of fact, our focus for the moment is just to kind of keep it keep the 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 I guess the uh, the effort focused on local uh, area pastors. We've not expanded our search uh, beyond that for the moment. And so we continue to review. And uh, like I said, we've made a few phone calls in the process. Um, but we're following the guidelines of the Tennessee Baptist Convention. And one of the things that they recommend uh, was this prayer guide, and it goes along very well with what Reverend Luck was just preaching about, uh, talking about unity. And there's one thing that uh, we, and we pray as a team, that's the first thing we do each and every time we meet. 
we spend that first 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes or so praying with each other openly, okay? And the primary thing we're praying for is that the Lord will give us wisdom and discernment. And this is a process that um, even though there's seven of us uh, on this committee, this really is a church-wide search. This is not just the seven of us looking for the one man that Steve Holt uh, has said that we're really focusing on, but this person, this man that we find when the Lord brings him our way, he will be preaching one Sunday, and then you as a church family will, will be voting. We don't know when that will happen. We're waiting on the Lord to, to show us who this one is. But in the meantime, this 40-day journal, this is something the Tennessee Baptist Convention has provided and they recommend. It's more than just 40 days of focused Bible study. This is you, church family, becoming part of the process of finding who that one person is. And I don't stand here today and say this lightly, but we covet, strongly covet, your prayers and involvement in this. This is way too important for us to take lightly, and it's way too important for us to pick the wrong person. We want to have the Lord's wisdom and to pick the man that the Lord wants. And so to do that, it requires all of us. This is not just seven people. This is all of us. So I pray that next week when, you, when uh, we hand this out, that you each take a copy and that you diligently seek out the Lord during these 40 days. And uh, please pray for, the, for wisdom and discernment for each of us on the team. Uh, we take this very, very seriously. And like I said, there's way too much riding on this um, uh, to, to make a mistake and pick the wrong person. So we, we really, really are truly seeking the Lord out. And we ask that you take part in this process. So let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for um, uh, just the opportunity to be here. And Lord, in unison as a church family, may we seek together uh, your will out. Uh, may we, um, uh, we just uh, approach your throne and ask for wisdom and discernment to be poured out upon not just the search team, but for all of us. Lord, help us to seek you out, know what your will is, know which way you would have us to go, and who you want us to be, or who you want to be the next shepherd of this church body. Lord, I just pray that you uh, send us out this week. You would put at least one person in our paths uh, this week to boldly share the gospel. And Lord, we uh, want to lift up uh, the family of, uh, uh, of Dorothy Purdy. We want to especially lift up Henry. And Lord, I pray that you pour out compassion and peace and love on him during this very difficult time. And Lord, may we as a church body come in unity together to support that family. In Jesus' name, amen.